All right, this is an episode on the film Crippled Avengers. This is because I have been going through a lot of shang Chi's films recently. A lot of Shaw Brothers movies were just put on movie, and I'm like, I'm going to go through a lot of them. And I probably could have done a video talking about a lot of his movies. I watched Five Deadly Venoms, Five Element Ninjas. I watched a lot of other ones. But this is the last one I watched. I'm like, this is kind of interesting and it encapsulates a lot of stuff that we could talk about i haven't done a full-on like classic 70s era martial arts film yet a couple years back we talked about ip man with donnie yen that's like the closest we got i really like that movie and i really like this genre and i do think it's not that it's like a lost genre to a younger era of film fanatics it's just not one that people really go back to so I just want to say, like, if you are a younger film fan and you're like, well, what are the classics I have to watch? I think if you watch a lot of like these classic 60s, 70s and 80s martial arts films, the Bruce Lee stuff is easy to get into. If you want to go back to the shang Shi stuff, too, like I'm watching here, it, there is something to get from these because the story is so interesting and the action is always incredible. The action in these movies is always in focus with long takes. You are seeing the physicality of the performers at play here, and it looks incredible. And then the story is just so weird sometimes, because this is a really insane story, and I don't really know how much we're going to go into the weeds of it, because a lot of these films follow the same premise. Somebody is wronged, something happens to them in like normally like the first 15 to 20 minutes. Then the next part of the film is going to a temple or or a manor somewhere, you're meeting somebody who was like the best of the craft, who's from like a rival, just like a rival to the bad guys, and we're going to study for years to come back and take our revenge, or avenge something that happened to us, or, or the people that were wronged, or whatever. That's the premise of these movies, and then they just end. They end once we kill the bad guy, and we don't even have a denouement. It's just like, we're just going to leave the temple now. Okay, we're done. That is, that's the whole story of this movie, but the stuff in between here is truly interesting. So you have this powerful guy who like controls this town and his son is attacked by like a rival clan. They're like called like the Tiger Three something and they kill this guy's wife and they cut off the, like the arms of this guy's son. So the, what's his name? I'm sorry, I, I don't have the names memorized. It's like the Dao, Dao Tian, Dao Tian Du or something like that is like the main bad guy's name. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to make my son really cool metal arms that can shoot shurikens out of them and can like stretch like he's a Masters of the Universe character. And he's going to train in Kung Fu, but with like these metal arms. And he's going to be the best that you've ever seen. So he trains his son. And then he's like, these are the descendants of the guys that killed your mom. Why don't you beat them up and show them how powerful you are? So his son does that. His son is Dao Shang or Dao Chang, I think. And they do that. So now they're like the, the evil empire that like controls this town or this village or something. They're not the crippled Avengers. The man who lost his arms is not the crippled Avenger. It is four other men. The first one is this salesman who goes to this tavern. Chen Shun, I think is his name. Again, I really apologize with these names. The, it's, it's kind of hard to memorize them, especially when we, we don't really say their names that much. And we're just kind of like watching people on screen. But he's the salesman. He goes to this tavern. Another guy walks in this tavern. He's the blacksmith of this village. His name is Wei. And Wei is kind of like boisterous and loud. He's like, I don't really give a shit about the, like the iron armed man or his stupid dad. I'll fight them. I don't really care. And this action is dangerous and it's kind of like, just shut up, dude, shut up, wait, don't don't tell anybody about that stuff. So that's going on. And then what happens is the son and the father just take out their anger and frustration of people making fun of them or like talking shit about them by crippling these people. So our salesman is blinded when the iron fingers go into his eyes and he can no longer see. And then our loud mouthed blacksmith gets like, he he's like forced to drink like a specific type of like potion or, or serum or whatever that makes him mute 
and then we like break his eardrums so he's deaf and you're like okay so we have two guys who are the crippled avengers they're gonna come in no more happens there's this another guy in the village what is his name i believe he is hugh aki hugh aki something similar to that hugh or who he like accidentally bumps into the sun and then chang cuts off his legs so he is picked up by the blacksmith and they are brought back to like the blacksmith fairy and they're like this sucks like what are we gonna do the one guy can't talk and he can't hear anything the one guy's blind the one guy can't walk and you're like oh so we're they're gonna have to like use their disadvantage to get them get, to like beat them right kind of we have to build up to that because there's another guy wang yi who is like a, a special martial artist he's like the best that you've ever seen he's from the eagle mansion temple which is like a ways away he finds that these guys were wronged by like the dao that's the, like controlling the whole village so he's like i'm gonna go avenge you guys i'll be the avenger for you crippled avengers so i'll go do that so wang goes into this temple he gets pretty close to victory but then he gets taken down and they put a weird device on his head that like breaks his brain or something and now he has the mind of a child so now he has to go back to way's blacksmith area and you got these four guys who cannot do anything together and now they have to their plan is we'll go back to eagle mansion and we'll we'll figure out how to train in martial arts and kung fu and then we'll come back and we'll do this fight and we'll take them down that's that's the movie and i'm like that is just really cool i really like the way we got these guys who are just perfectly fitted to this very specific thing so our blind salesman right shen you have an actor who is very commanding and very stoic like he can't be too loud or crazy he has to just like have a presence our actor playing way the deaf mute blacksmith he has to have very big facial expressions we got an actor that does that our actor turned into a little baby kid boy he's very outgoing and all the movements have to be natural and easy flowing he's really good at that the, 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 the choreography is so good and our actor who is who who is just legless he's kind of got to be like the voice for everybody and, and that kind of stuff i love all that these guys are so good together so they they like get a wagon and we're gonna just like bring everybody on the wagon we're gonna climb up and then like the old kung fu master's like it's really hard to be the best but i promise all of you i'm going to make sure you are the best it's going to take some time so the next 30 minutes of this movie are going to be you guys training in your specific ways and it looks awesome and that's the thing about these movies it's that it's it's less about the story and more about the acrobatics and actual martial arts that we can show you and have you do so many of like the training sequences and the fight sequences just look so cool they're so specialized so our legless man we built him iron legs that's pretty sick we love to see that the best training part is definitely when shen and wang are like playing against each other with like the the rings because the rings are kind of like you have to control the movement you can hear every sound as you're moving it because you're blind and they're bouncing off each other just like climbing through the rings and stuff and that like comes into play when they do like the fight at the end because i think the fight at the end when it's shen and wang going against chang using the rings and it's just like five minutes of unbroken movements between these three guys bouncing off each other moving around each other having to make it look effortless it's really cool because that's the other thing and, and i talk about this when we've talked about musicals and stuff the thing with musicals is you have to make it look effortless it's physical and it is demanding but you can't make it look hard that is the same with martial arts like this. When you have like a generic like brawler action flick where you have like an old man just beating up some people, you can make them look tired because that makes them like the everyman. But when you do Kung Fu, it has to look effortless. So when you're like holding up this ring that's strangling a guy's neck and then someone's jumping through it and they're kicking it up in the air, flipping off their back to knock them back down again, you cannot screw that up. It has to look perfect. And it does. And the whole time, one of them has to look blind, one of them can't move their arms because they are stiff, and the other one has to do it like the joyful child. And it looks flawless every time. So they train for three years, and they become the masters of their craft. It's like listening to, using reflections to see everything around you, and just listening to like the specific noises of even like a leaf falling. 
and learning to use your legs as a weapon. So as that's going on, the Dao that's actually like controlling the city, he realizes something's coming up and it's his birthday coming up. So this is going to happen on his birthday. So his brother, who is just like this tough, big guy is like, I have like an iron stomach. Nobody can break me. So he's going to like team up with a couple of the other people because look, now there's four crippled Avengers coming to fight them. We have to have more than two villains, the father, the son, the uncle, and then, like, Master Wan, who is, like, second in command to, like, the Dao. So he's going to show up, too. And then we got Lin. And Lin is, like, this guy. He's, like, he's got, like, a slingshot and he fires marbles. So we have to defeat him and that kind of stuff. And it's cool. And then it's just, like, our crippled Avengers, they got their plan. They're going to go back to the tavern. It's just going to be the blind salesman. So Chen is going to pretend he's like a fortune teller and he's actually going to be really smart. He's going to like defeat all these people that come for him. And the key thing is we don't want the bad guys to know that we have a man with iron legs. So who is going to stay back? And we he's not going to do a lot of the heavy fighting for like the middle section when we actually like defeat people. But he's going to get the finishing blows because when the uncle comes in and he's like, all right, you guys are hassling my nephew and my brother. We're going to do this two ways, okay? I'm going to give you three kicks and three punches to knock me down. If you can't do it, I'm going to kill you. And then in comes Iron Legs, and he just stabs him with his iron leg, and his foot pierces into the guy's chest, and he's dead. And then they're like, oh, shit, this is serious. Now the birthday festivities are ruined, and it just becomes a really cool brawl at the end of the film. There's not much story to this, but it is about just seeing the practicality of the way people move, and... Me explaining to you the fight sequences are not going to do them justice because they are so specific in their movements, so specific in just like the nobility of a fight, like how you fight, how you do anything, literally like flipping a table around to block things coming at you, just like embedding beads into people. And it's just so crazy and specific and it looks awesome. And our good guys win at the end, and then it's just like, roll credits, nothing else. They won. Oh, yeah, and Wang dies. <laughs> the, the one who loses his brain to become like a child, he dies. We kill him. But I guess, like, he he had to go. I don't know. I don't think he had to go. It's just kind of weird that that happened. Look, I love this type of movie. They're normally, like, 90 to 100 minutes long. You have really good restorations. Like, all of these ones that I have watched, the remasters are fantastic, and the colors are so vibrant. They look so specific and cool. The action is always enjoyable, and you just get something so cool from these guys committing to the specific bit. This guy can't bend his knees too much because his legs are made of iron. This guy can't scream or hear anything, so it's all in, like, the angry eyebrows. This kid is going to act like he's an acrobat jumping about all over the place when it's a grown man. It's really cool and specific, and you just get a sense that this is awesome. I love these types of movies, and they're so interesting. And this one, Crippled Avengers, it sounds ridiculous. And when it opens up, it does look ridiculous, but it just completely finds itself and you get enthralled of the story. It happens quick and fast and you love every second of the violence and chaos going on in this piece. And you just start to root for these guys throughout everything. It's really cool. So please watch some shang Shea films. They're really cool. And just check out Crippled Adventures because that's going to do it for this episode of Dynamic Tales. Now, thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.